right time. Well, I'm sure they're going to adjust because we doubled we doubled all the ball screens the first time, and and I Jamie made reference to it in a couple of his um, interviews afterwards. So I'm sure they're going to try try to make some adjustments. Um, I don't know. I think I think we're at the point where we're getting fairly good at what we do. So we'll probably just keep doing what we do. Yeah, so let's ask you, do more often than not, you just do what you're good at when you face people later in the season, or are, are there significant changes? No, I think you can tweak some things, but I think by and large, you do what you do. You do what you're good at. I mean, you've practiced it all year. Question goes to Justin Jackson. Hey, Coach. Hey, uh, I was just wondering, uh, TCU, uh, Mike Miles uh, injured knee uh, in the last game. It uh, doesn't look like he's going to play. Uh, how much does that change uh, the, the scout and, you know, just, just change what, uh, you know, how you can attack them? Because obviously, you know, he's their best player. Mm, I don't, I don't, I don't think it changes them very much. Um, they've got, they've got multiple guys that make shots. And I, you know, I watched, I watched a bunch of their games yesterday. And um, when, when Miles has a bad day, they have a lot of other people that are very capable of stepping up. I mean, they've got, they've got at least three or four guys that are really, really good shooters. And they've got guys that, that handle the ball well. So uh, obviously he's a great player. They're going to miss him, but um They've got a whole bunch of other guys that can, I think, step up for them. Questions for Coach Huggins, please use the raised hand feature. We'll go back to Greg Hunter. Bob, talk about uh, James Okonkou a little bit more. You've, you've talked about him a lot, but um, it, for a guy, especially a foreign guy to, who hasn't maybe played a lot of American basketball, how long does it normally take them to – you know, get to where they're, you want them to be, and how quickly has he arrived? Uh, well, you know, James came over here and, and played at a prep school in southern West Virginia for uh, a year or so. It may, may have been a little bit more than a year. Um, and played for Justin Dempsey, and Justin did a great job with him. Uh, I think Justin did. Um Got them, I think, ready. Uh, I mean, you, you can't get them ready for, for what he's involved in now, just the physicality of, of what goes on. But well, Justin did a great job with him. So, you know, when he came here, he had a he had an idea. You know, I think the, the, the thing that it took him a while to get used to was was the physicality. You know, you – you go in there and bang on Jimmy for a while and bang on Mo for a while and, you know, Trey and so forth. I mean, it's a, it's the physicality part of it, I think is what uh, he, he just, he, he really had a hard time adjusting to initially. But I, I mean, I think he's, he kind of relishes it now. Go into the recruitment of him a little bit. The coaches down at Beckley call you and say, Hey, we got somebody you'd be interested in. How, how, how'd you find him and how'd you recruit him? Well, Justin recruited him. Justin recruited him and and brought him over. And and uh, Justin sent us some film. And, and uh, Justin kept saying, you know, he's somebody I think you really need to take a look at. And uh, I think then when when we did take a look at him, obviously he's got great bounce. And, you know, then he was, he was a lot thinner than, than what he is now. Um, but, I mean, you could see the, the raw potential that he had. So we were, we were excited about taking him. Brian Decker. Coach, if we can go off the basketball court here uh, for a second. Um, you had your fish fry last weekend uh do you have any update on how much money was raised and how i guess how successful that was well i'm told it's two million or more so um 
I, I haven't got I haven't got the figures yet, but I just I just talked to Debbie and Debbie had just talked to talked to people that said it's it's over ten million dollars. What's that mean to you too? I guess at least for two or three years in a row now, you know, hit that total and do do that um, for those organizations that you've raised that money for. That's why we do it. We 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 do it. You know, and again, I I lost my mother to cancer, and to uh, to sit there by her bedside and and see my mother struggle through um, months of 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 cancer. You know, it was a was a really really rough thing, and you know you just yeah you know, obviously you feel bad for all the people who have loved ones going through that, and you know I just thought you know anything that that we could do to help I think would be um, time well spent, and um, you know I think we have a great need for it here in this state, and. You know, my my goal is to build a, a state of the art cancer center here and here on campus at the university here in Morgantown, where West Virginia people don't have to, you know, worry about going to Boston or uh, going all over the place to be treated. They can be treated right here and have state of the art equipment, state of the art doctors that um, can give our people. The, the best treatment or as good a treatment as you can get anywhere in a country. Next question goes to Bob Herzl. Yeah, Bob, uh, you have uh, a different team maybe than when you started Big 12 play uh, right now. I mean, you've got far more options uh, available to you, it, it looks like. Uh, the option of playing uh, Joe and uh, Keedy together, let's say, uh, playing three guards together, playing uh, uh, down low playing uh, Jimmy and uh, Okakwo together. Uh, uh, how is that going to change things? I mean, uh, talk, talk a little bit about the options that you have uh, facing you and, and how you will use that. Well, I think it depends on personnel, depends on on their personnel, uh, what we think we can take advantage of. You know, James has been, James just keeps getting better and better and and he gives us that shot block and ability that uh, is special. And I think the the more he plays, the better he's going to get. I think the, the bigger factor he'll be around the rim. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a matter of who's playing well that day. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's kind of good to be able to see somebody's, you know, having uh, not their best day and be able to put somebody in. I mean, I think what we do with, uh, you know, Keedy's been really banged up. Uh, has not has not been uh, what Keedy was early on. He's just been they they they've really banged him up. And um, Joe's come in and done a terrific job for us. Uh, I think Eric is Eric's kind of fine and found himself. Uh, you know, he's become much more of a of a team player i think his his understanding of of where and when he can get shots is so much better uh and then you know i i think you know with with them and trey you got two really seasoned veteran guys and you know everybody's not gonna play well every day trey didn't have a great day the other day and we were still able to win uh, you know, Emmett's had some days when he didn't play as well as he's certainly capable of playing, which happens. Uh, I mean, it happens to everybody. So to, just to be able to have guys off the bench, I think Seth's done a great job for us coming off the bench when other guys have struggled making shots. So it's, you know, it's, I think it's a, it's a luxury to have some guys that you can bring in off the bench that can pick up for some guys that maybe uh, aren't having their best days. You have to feel far more ready to make a run now through the second half than you probably were at the start. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think in, in the beginning we were kind of lost. We were, you know, you, you, we, we had guys in the portal. We had, we had transfers, we had, 
we had freshmen, we had some guys returning, you know, we, we just, we had such a conglomeration of a lot of different people who had been coached so many different ways and to be able to get all those guys on the same page was really a struggle. And I think we're to the point now where everybody understands what their role is. They understand what they can do. They understand what their teammates can do. And I think that puts us in a, in a, in a much, much better place. But, you know, that being said, I think everybody else has played as many games as we have, and they've gone through, by and large, the same kind of things that we have. Thanks. Kevin Kinder. Coach, following up on your goal of getting that cancer center built, is there a target number where you, you know you would need to get to to start construction? Obviously, you know, looking for support from other places as well. Uh, any idea of what that might be, or um, you know, what your goal would be there? Well, we're looking at a whole lot of different avenues. Um, you know, we've we've had discussions with a, a lot of different people from uh, a lot of different. Uh, areas. So um, <clears throat> I don't, I don't know that anything right now is, is definite or set in stone, but I think there are numerous possibilities for us to be able to, to get the resources that we need to get, to get it off the ground and running. And then you mentioned going back on the court with all the different players that have starting to find their roles You've had different players take the lead, as you mentioned, a lot of positives in that. Is there a negative that, hey, maybe at crunch time or when you need a big bucket, maybe there's not one or two players that are initially looking to take the lead? Do you have to have that, or can the, this approach by group work for the rest of the year? Well, I mean, in, in, in all honesty, and, and Eric would be – the first one to admit this. I mean, he struggled, and we 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 tried to we tried to put him in positions where he could win games for us, and and uh, and he struggled. And um, you know, I think it was a great learning experience for him. I think he's he's accepted it. He's 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 come out of it a much much better player, uh, a, a, a much much better teammate as a result of it. And, and I mean, but that, I mean, that happens. I mean, that happens um, virtually every team, you know, that, that it takes, it takes some people to find uh, their niche, so to speak. Next question goes to John and Tony. Take away from the um, Auburn game, now that you had a, a day or two to think about it, what was the most pleasing aspect to you about the way your team was able to hang in there and, and get a win? We won. That's the most pleasing thing to me, John. I mean, we, we, we kind of – I thought we had um, decent control of what was going on, and then they came back and, and they made some shots. They made some hard shots, and then we did some – we made some some blunders that kind of led to uh, them getting uh, back in the game, but I, I mean, I was I was proud of our guys that that we we hung in there. You know, we could have we could have dropped our heads and, and and hung our heads and 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 not competed. But I think the way we competed down the stretch, that the way we 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 found ways, and I mean that's that's what it's about. I mean, when you're when you're when you're playing. Um, really good people. You you got to find ways to win, you know. And it's it's very rarely ever all the same way, you know. Whether whether it's a steal, whether it's a key rebound, um, you know, whether whether it's going to the line and making free throws. I mean, it's it, it's a lot of different things. And and we've struggled as as I think everybody knows. We've we've struggled making free throws down the stretch. That's something that we've got to we've got to get a whole lot better at. I think a whole lot more comfortable with. I have one more here. Um, I know uh, last week we talked about the strength of of the Big Twelve, and it kind of played out uh, Saturday with the with the wins that win in the SEC. My question is, um, when you go back and you look at at the Big Twelve from say nineteen twenty nineteen to today. 
And you, you know, with Texas Tech playing in the finals and then and then Baylor and Kansas winning national championships. Where do you put this league in in, in terms of um uh consistency over the last five years? Would you say it's among the best maybe ever? And I don't want to compare it to the the Big East in 85 when they had three in the final four. That's probably the best ever. But when you look at what this league has done over the last five years, can you think of another league? that compares in basketball to the strength of what the big 12 has done? No, I don't, I don't think so. But, but I think it, it you know, if you look, um, there were, there were not good, but great coaches, um, coaches that coaches that were, you know, when everybody said, you know, name the three or four best coaches in a country, a couple of them at least, maybe maybe three were were in our league and i think i think the other coaches have really kind of uh, stepped up and and you start you start thinking about uh the changes that 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 people made that athletic directors presidents whomever made in and and made i think great coaching decisions you know i mean they were able to go um, recruit, pluck guys that were nationally known, nationally renowned. I mean, you you can't you can't look at our league and say, you know, well, you know, that guy's going to struggle in our league. Nobody does. I mean, somebody's obviously got to got to finish last, but uh, just just the 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 the. Uh, tremendous coaching that goes on in this league and then i think because of that the the ability to attract players and and i think you know you you can attract better players i think the more the more recognition the coach gets the school gets the easier it is to recruit i mean all all 10 teams in this league are in the top 37 right now i mean that's ridiculous (laughs) well they should be well, I mean, I get it, but I mean, do do your colleagues, the guys that you talk to, I mean, do they really fully realize? Do uh, you think when you talk to guys, maybe outside the league? I mean, the people in the league know. Yeah, well, I mean, you you know, you you look at what Kansas has been over the years. You you look at what Baylor's done here in the last well, however many years. You, uh, I think everybody knows how good a coach Jamie. Jamie Spin and what what Jamie's done to build the program at TCU. Um, you know, they 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 lose a great coach at, at at Oklahoma and they bring in a young guy who's did a terrific job uh, where he was in a in a school that was certainly not known for being a basketball power and and took them on a big NCA run and 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 now he's doing a terrific job at Oklahoma. Mike's done a Fantastic job at Oklahoma State. Um, I mean, it, it's it's a it's a, it's a hard hard league, and you you can't make mistakes. I mean, if you if you make a mistake, I mean, we made we made a mistake obviously at Oklahoma State and 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 lost, and when and and that's a game we probably we we could have won. I mean, there's 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 games that we could have won that that we made mistakes, and it's 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 a matter of um, you know, I think to a degree coaches go through when, when they get to a place, they're, they're not sure of everything. They're not sure how everything falls. Um, just like players aren't. And, and so I think the, the, the more, uh, we have guys that have been in the league, understand what the league's about, understand how hard the league is. Uh, understand the officiating of the league because I mean let's let's face the fact those guys are a huge part of the game. I mean they want to you know they want to act like they're not a part of it. They are a huge part of the game. And knowing them, knowing what they call or you know what they like to call or you know it, it's uh that's a that's part of it. And and I think the guys that have been in the league for a while obviously are better at it. Mm-hmm. The longer the longer some of the guys are in the league, I think the 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 better they understand of of what's how some guys will let you you know play one way and and maybe not maybe not another way. It's um, 
there's a lot of factors, I guess. Just Mike's in the queue. I've got one more. I'll let you go on this. Um, you've been in some leagues, and I've heard you say this before, where you knew if your team wasn't at their best, you were going to beat the guy across from you, whatever, whoever that was or whatever that was. That's not the case in this league, is it? No, not at all. Not at all. You know, and, and, and I mean, I've been I've been in leagues with I was in, in leagues with Denny Crum. I mean, Louisville was Louisville. They were they were it. I mean, Joey Meyer could 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 really coach. I mean, there were we had we had guys, but then we also had guys that were kind of just kind of, you know, kind of breaking in mm -hmm. um, that. Um, they got they got beat around pretty good because they didn't understand what the veteran guys did understand. And, and I think that, I think that happens everywhere. You know, I think that happens in every league and that's, that's why uh, athletic directors spend an enormous amount of time. You know, you talk about scouting. I mean, those guys spend an enormous amount of time watching basketball, seeing, uh, and, and their perception, the guys that, that are going to coach one the way they, they, they want, you know, their team to coach and act and, you know, whatever, but that has a chance to be successful in this league. Thanks. Let's move on to uh, Mike Kazaza. Morning, Bob. How are you? Good, Mike. Good. Um, if I can go back to your, your lineup here with the two big guys, with James and Jimmy, um, a couple of days ago, you said you hadn't even thought about – you didn't have any reason to try it out in practice. And then all of a sudden they're out there Saturday playing and looking pretty good. I'm assuming that's for a matchup, but that pairing in particular, what what are you looking for with them? And then, I guess, from practice to the game, what did you see in the game? Well, I think what James <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I think what James did at, at uh, Texas Tech – I think opened a lot of eyes and then and, and I think most importantly it opened James's eyes that James could be a factor. And um, you know, like I said, I mean I, there's gonna be games when somebody struggles. I mean it it, it happens. And the ball just don't go in. I mean you you leave it you leave it a little short, you know, you miss short, you miss long, you you're, you're a little careless with the ball. You're, I mean, a lot of things happen, and and you know, and it's a, it's nice to have somebody like James that you can bring in. Now, I don't know that we'll continue to bring James in. I mean, he he and Jimmy may may be what the doctor ordered for us together, um, but then you take the chance of both of them getting in foul trouble. It's a lot of variables, a lot of variables that you gotta try to sit down and you try to evaluate during uh during during practice as best you possibly can. Could you play Mo with one of those two or is it only those two you feel comfortable playing together right now? No, we played we played Mo and 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 Jimmy together way more right. than we played uh Jimmy and and James together. Okay. And then obviously that gives you possibilities in the post but i would imagine you can float around different players around those two again depending on the matchups too is it is it fair to say that the other three guys the variables there that's just as much a part of the equation as as those two in that pairing what's a what's a large part of the equation is what do we need what are people doing are they are they playing a zone are they packing it in are they daring us to shoot it on the perimeter well i mean obviously if that happens you, you want train again you know, try in the game as much as he can. He can be in the game. You know, but on the perimeter, you you want Seth in the game. You know, if you need if you need somebody defensively, if you know if there's a lot of switching and things going on, you know, you, you probably want Kobe in the game. You know, it's 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 a matter of adjusting to what other people do and what their adjustments to you are. We have time for one last question before practice starts. It goes to Greg Carey. Yeah, Bob, the first meeting with TCU, you pretty much handled him on the glass. I think Jamie said after the game, it was you know not exactly a, a normal basketball game. How do you translate that physicality and bring that to the road tomorrow? We're going to do what we do. 
Um, you know, I, I've got obviously great respect for Jamie and Jamie and I have coached against each other for quite a number of years now. So I think we, we both have a pretty good idea what the other one's going to do or, or at least what they're capable of doing. So uh, we're going to, we're going to try to get ready. We know we've watched uh, numerous tapes, uh, haven't done anything really, but watched TCU since, since the Auburn game's over. And I'm sure Jamie has spent a lot of time doing the same. So uh, he'll try to figure out how to, how to change what we did to them. And we'll try to figure out what, what they did to us. So how we can, how we can get better. Okay, Coach Huggins, your practice is starting. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.